Sunday. We're all here together. It's time to calm our busyness, our minds from the busyness of life. It's time to open our hearts to what God will lay on it. It's time to worship. Mm -hmm. Please stand, please. 
and join me in the call to worship. We have heard that we are not enough, we are not good enough, we are not strong enough, we are not whole enough. We have heard that we do not make enough, we do not own enough, we do not have enough. Gather to worship, for God's word is enough. Hope is enough. Love is enough. Life is enough. God gives us eternal life, and this life is in God's Son. Let us worship God. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, warm our hearts with the wonderful blessing of your love, that together we might be your children and your faithful servants, that we might hear the word of the Lord before us today and have joy in our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's join and sing uh, the hymn number 138, Holy, Holy, Holy. Mm -hmm.
join our hearts in a time of silent confession. Amen. Here at the good news, God continues to create out of the chaos and brokenness of our lives, filling our hearts with love, transforming our despair into hope, shaping our selfishness into servanthood. Please be seated. Today we share the word of the Lord coming from our Old Testament scripture passage from Psalm 47. Hear now the blessing of God's word before us. Clap your hands. All ye peoples, shout to God with loud songs of joy. For the Lord, the Most High, is awesome, a great king over all the earth. He subdued the people under his, uh, under us and nations under our feet. He chose our heritage for us, the pride of Jacob, whom he loves. God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Sing praises to God, sing praises, sing praises to our King, sing praises. For God is the King of all the earth, sing praises with a song. God is King over the nations, God sits on His holy throne. Princes of the people gather as the people of God of the God of Abraham, for the shields of the earth belong to God. He is highly exalted. Here ends this blessed reading coming today uh, from the voice of the psalmist. And we give, you th we give God thanks for that blessing. see this, but I have a red pen with me. Red pen. And when I was in school, sometimes the teacher would have us trade papers, and then the teacher would read the answers out, and uh, we would use a red crayon or a red pencil to mark all the ones that were wrong. And so uh, the person in the de desk next to you, if you had a lot wrong, had to put a lot of red marks on your paper. So 
What happens if the friend in the next desk wanted to be nice to you? And if you had a lot wrong, they just put the red pen in their pocket and didn't mark anything. Well, maybe the teacher wouldn't notice and maybe you'd get a better grade, but you wouldn't learn from the mistakes that you made. So that's kind of the way it works when we are friends in Jesus Christ the Lord. We don't uh, want to you know, be dishonest to somebody just to make them feel better. We don't want to not converse about somebody if we think that they may converse with somebody if we think they made a mistake. We have to use the red pencil maybe to hold, uh, to remind people that even though we may make mistakes, we still have to learn from the mistakes and serve God in a way that honors God. So just like you know, we can use a red pencil in a nice way and in a way that helps us to learn from our mistakes and honor God by trying to do what's right. Sometimes not paying any attention to our mistakes creates more mistakes and creates a habit of doing things that are not correct. What we want to do is uh, hear a, fa a time when we made a mistake and then not be it sad about the mistake, but learn that we made a mistake and next time we can do better. That way, you know, just like the guy used the red pen on my homework, when I had that, those red marks, I had to learn to do it right next time. The same way with friends that uh, maybe tell us that we did something wrong or remind us that we didn't honor God one day. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Dear God, we thank you for the wonderful blessing of friends. Friends who will be honest with us. And friends who we can join our hearts together and learn about the love of the Lord. We give you thanks and we offer our hearts and ask your blessing this day that each might learn from the things that go wrong. So that we might have a dearer love of our Savior Jesus Christ. In his name we pray. Amen. We come now to the place where we share a New Testament scripture lesson, which comes today from uh, the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1. The glory of the Lord is before us today through the holy word of our great God. In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and all that Jesus taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up into heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God while staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So, when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or the periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. 
When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and the clouds took him out of their sight. While he was going, they were gazing up toward heaven, and suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up to heaven? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will come in the same, same way you saw him go into heaven. Here ends this blessed reading that comes to us by the power of the Holy Spirit today. Uh, it is the word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks be to God. God. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we pray that you might shine a rich light on our journey as we hear the word of the Lord together. Fill our hearts with grace, love, and mercy that we might be your faithful servants and that we might glean the wisdom of God's word before us. We give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. We have shared a familiar story today that describes the occasion when Jesus arose into heaven from the city of Jerusalem with his disciples watching and wondering what all of this meant. And so they asked him before he left, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? And of course, they had in mind that he would restore the power uh, and take away the tyranny of the Roman Empire. But he said to them, it is not for you to know the time or the dates. The Father has set these dates by his own authority. And then he said to them this, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And after he told them this, after he told them about the coming spirit into their heart, he was taken up before their very eyes. And a cloud hid them, hid him from their sight. Think about what the disciples were thinking at this point in their lives. They had had a long journey with this person that they knew as Jesus. Surely their hearts was, were filled with all kinds of emotions. Their friend disappeared from their sight. So perhaps they were sad at the departing of their friend. There was probably an element of fear in their hearts because their friend was gone. They had counted on the wisdom of Jesus to guide them through and now they had this new friend, the Holy Spirit, that they were unsure about. How would that work? Where would they find the wisdom in that? They had always had Jesus with them to help them when they needed wisdom and love and support to help hold them accountable to use the red pencil, as I was telling with the kids. Perhaps there was joy in their hearts. Perhaps in some way they were finally starting to understand that Jesus had to go to be with his Father. Whatever the feelings were that were in their hearts, they stood there and they looked up from the Mount of Olives in Jerusalem. They looked up into heaven. And when they were doing this, pondering all these emotions that were in their hearts, two men dressed in white stood beside them and said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand here looking up into the sky? Well, that's an interesting question. Because if we think about the way that we live our journeys, I think that sometimes we are found in the same position as the disciples are during this passage, looking up and wondering what is going on and how will the glory of the kingdom of heaven help my situation here in this place? We, you and me, are standing in a specific time and place where God has put us. A 
place in this world. It's not the top of the Mount of Olives, but it is a place in this world where God has put us. And where we have purpose in His plan. A purpose to serve God. And just like the disciples, there are times in our lives when we just stand there and look to the kingdom of God and we wonder, what will God do to help us? We've had a glimpse of what the completion and the restoration of God's kingdom might be like, just like the disciples did, because we experienced the Easter, the empty tomb, the light. We're on the end of our Easter celebration. And so we have had a glimpse of what the completion and restoration of God's kingdom might be like. And so we wonder, how is God going to get us out of this? How is God going to help us? When we think about it, our journeys, as we stand here and look up into the sky, are kind of like the very beginning of a great novel. From this place in life, we're tempted, and we want to go and turn the pages forward and see what the end of the novel is like. We want to know how it all turns out. But that's not how you gain the benefit of a great novel. Nor is it the way that you gain the benefit of a great journey of faith. To reap the benefits of a great journey of faith, you want to read all the pages. You want to experience all the situations of love and strife, and turmoil, and struggle, and redemption, and all the things that come from the hand of the Lord. But when the Holy Spirit leads us through those, not by looking at the end, because we already know how it turns out. We already know the redeeming love of Jesus has saved us. But to really experience a journey of faith, we have to go through all of those things that God ordains that we would go through. Jesus told the disciples, and he tells us, the kingdom will come according to God's plan. In fact, we know that God's kingdom is coming into our lives, just like it was coming for the disciples, because the Holy Spirit of God was coming to show them the light. But the light of God's kingdom through the Holy Spirit shines for us now, just as bright as it did on that day of the ascension, if we embrace the Spirit's blessing that God places right before us. The love, the servanthood, the fellowship, the worship in the Spirit's name. We come to know the light of Christ not by looking at the sky and wondering how it will all end. Not by speculating and dreaming about the completion of God's kingdom in that day. We come to know today the wondrous light of Jesus Christ by participating in this wonderful revelation that Jesus has promised. That the Holy Spirit would come and that the Holy Spirit would lead us in a way that would help us to bring God glory. So today, we should ask the question, I suppose, what are we waiting for? Are we waiting for the completion of God's kingdom beyond this realm? Or are we waiting for the Spirit's leading in this place, in this time, today, right here and now, we know about God's glory. We have just spent an entire Easter season celebrating the risen presence of Jesus Christ. In this passage, we do get a glimpse of His kingdom when Jesus is raised up into the clouds. And we assume 
that he will take his place and that he has taken his place on the throne of glory. We are promised by the resurrection that we have a place in the eternity of God's kingdom. But we are also told this, we have a place in God's kingdom that unfolds before us today. And with each day that passes, because we have a great command before us, love your God and love your neighbors, your neighbors that are here and now in this community and in this place in your journey when we all hand in hand participate in the plan that God has for us. But if we lose our focus on God's love here and now, then we miss lots of opportunities that we have to serve Christ in our world, in our time, and then help our world to know about the glory of God, to help our world to get that glimpse of God's glorious kingdom completed, to help the world see a glimpse of the Spirit that comes into our heart with the Holy Spirit and with fire. How they stood there that day when Jesus ascended into heaven? Well, we know there was 12, right? Maybe 50, maybe 100, maybe 1,000. We don't know. But was that glory only for them? No. Is the vision that we have of Jesus on the throne of glory as we share this passage of Scripture, is that vision and glimpse of glory just for us? No. So, today we are called to wait, just like the disciples were called to wait, for the leading of the Holy Spirit. On this day, tomorrow, and on every single day of our lives. And in that way, we will be helped. We will take a part in God's plan to show the multitudes of people around us the vision of God's glory the way we have seen in fellowship of Jesus. At the command of our God, we count on the Spirit to show us how we can help those around us the multitude of those around us to have the same hope that we have come to know by our understanding of the risen presence of Jesus Christ, the redeeming love of the sacrifice that our Savior has made on our behalf. This is the final Sunday of our church's formal celebration of the Easter season. It is a vision of Christ ascending into heaven, ascending to his throne of glory. But today we have to ask the question, what are we looking for on this final day of our Easter celebration? And maybe the question, what are we waiting for? Because we know that Jesus told the disciples to wait for the Holy Spirit's leading. Jesus tells us the very same thing by the power of the Spirit in this the Word of God. So, did we read this passage and then look up to the place where maybe Jesus' throne is? Or did we look around for the opportunities that God gives us, His people, to tell the world about, about what we have seen and what we have heard and what we have witnessed? Do we have a desire then in our hearts to wait on the leading of the Holy Spirit and be the witnesses that we are called to be? Are we looking for a way to somehow experience heaven on earth because we have a special connection with Jesus and desire a special blessing because of that connection? Or 
Is the thankfulness in our hearts such a wonderful motivator that we want to shout out to the whole world that Jesus died to save us? <laughs> Those two angels who were there and asked the disciples on the Mount of Olives, why are you looking up to the sky? I think they're talking to you and me. They're talking to us. They convey the promise that Jesus will come again in glory. They convey the promise to you and me that one day Jesus will come in glory. But I think that those angels are also telling you and me to keep our eyes open for the opportunities so that we are not the only ones that hear that good news. Keep our eyes open for the opportunities to help our friends and neighbors and the world around us to see the glory and to know that our Savior is their Savior. A Savior who died for all of humanity to save and redeem the world from its sinfulness and to open the kingdom of heaven. Today, we are called to be his witnesses. The disciples were called to be witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. We are the ends of the earth, I guess. And so we are called to be his witnesses. Let us embrace the Spirit's leading and take our parts to witness to a world so in need of his love and his blessing and his redemption. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we humbly come before you and give you thanks for the blessing of the Word of God and the call of the Holy Spirit that we might be your servants and that we might not take those opportunities for granted that we all might feel the love and the warmth of our Savior's loving sacrifice. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's join together and uh, celebrate uh, the salvation of our Savior, singing hymn number 139, Come Thou Almighty King.
come now to the place during our time of worship where we prepare our hearts for the time that we spend in prayer. A couple of things that I want to call to your attention today. Uh, uh, a friend of Emma's passed away, so we want to keep uh, the family of uh, Ber Bernita Emos Emma, Sodi. Emma, Emma Sodi. She said it was hard to pronounce, and she was right, apparently. Bernita Emisodi, uh, the family of Bernita Emisodi. So keep uh, that family in our prayers. I understand that uh, Carol Schoening had a carpal tunnel surgery, but she's here and doing pretty good, it looks like. So uh, keep her in your prayers. John Cross prepares to have a heart surgery tomorrow, or a heart procedure tomorrow. So we want to keep him in our prayers. Uh, let's see. Also, um, uh, Ellen has some uh, concerns for us. Lillian Terrell, uh, also Laverne and Susan Knight, Alex Alavaris, uh, and another unspoken request, the family of Susan, the mother of Esther Joy King. She would like us to keep all those folks in our prayers. Uh, are there other joys or concerns that should come before us? The family of Karen Swanson, she passed away. Karen Swanson, the family of Karen Swanson, she passed away. Uh, way back there, Carol. Prayers for my brother, Bob, who was having a heart procedure Wednesday. So Carol's brother, Bob, is having a heart procedure on Wednesday. We want to keep in our, him in our prayers. Others? Let's bow our heads in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, there is joy in our hearts today because of the Spirit's leading, and that Spirit calls us to prayer. And so we humbly come before you and embrace the duty to pray and the opportunity to pray. We ask, Lord, that you would prepare our hearts now that not only uh, as we join our hearts together today, but through the week we might uh, uh, be in conversation with you about these needs and about our journeys of faith. We ask, Lord, that uh, you would uh, be present before us as we recognize these uh, calls to prayer. Uh, Bernita, Emma Sodi, we ask that you be with that family at the loss of Bernita. We ask that you just care for them. We ask that you uh, continue to go with Carol Schoening after she had that surgery. Uh, with John as he prepares for uh, the, the, uh, sur the procedure that awaits him. Uh, we ask uh, that you would be with the uh, family of, of uh, Cheryl's friend Karen. And we ask, Lord, that you would be with Carol's brother, Bob, as he prepares for heart surgery. We ask, Lord, that you would be with these friends of Ellen. Just wrap your arms around them, Lillian and Laverne and Susan, uh, Alex, and uh, all of those who have an unspoken request that is before us today. You know what they are. And the family of Susan, the mother of Esther Joy King, we ask that you be with all of these folks. We also ask, Lord, that you would uh, be with those in our congregation who have needs as Dorothy Gift uh, recovers from a procedure uh, and her sister, Judith Del Masso, recovering also from a surgery. We ask, Lord, that you'd also be with Martha Green, uh, going through cancer treatments, and David Chapman and Carol Pavlik. Just wrap your arms around all of these, your children. Help them to know that Christ is always by their side, bringing comfort, no matter what the difficulty is. And you know what the difficulty is and where the source of healing is, and we give you thanks for that blessing. We ask that you be with Carol Pavlik and Robert DeVries and Clint Dykhoff, just warm their hearts with the assurance that Christ's healing touch is a miracle for each one of us when we trust in the Spirit's leading. We ask that you be with Dylan Preston and Jackie Williams and all of those in our congregation who are unable to get out because of health problems or age. Just be present before each one and 
give the assurance of your never failing love. Be with all of the ministry of this congregation. Help us to be faithful witnesses as we are called today. Lord, we ask that you'd be uh, with our efforts to uh, support world relief. We ask that you'd be uh, present as we discern what it is that you might call us to do, to love and to serve. We ask that you'd be present in our world, Heavenly Father, that we might not just get caught up in our day's routine, but that we might ask your love accompany us every single day so that we take our place in the plan of the Lord and be our Savior's faithful servants. We pray now the prayer that our Savior taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. My friends, we come now to the place during our time of worship where we dedicate the offerings that have come before us. <coughs>